Hello everyone, my name is Aman Shanbha and I'm a specialist training and inference solutions architect at the machine learning frameworks team at AWS. I regularly work with customers in helping deploy their large scale training and inference workloads on our infrastructure. A service that I regularly work with is SageMaker HyperPod. Launched at reInvent in 2023, SageMaker HyperPod is an out of the box ultra cluster creation and management platform that helps you orchestrate your training and inference workloads in a scalable, reliable, secure, and resilient manner. Today, I'm going to talk about SageMaker Flexible Training Plans, a feature that we launched at reInvent in 2024. This is part one of a three-part series covering training plans and cluster creation, task governance, and studio integration. Let me give you a quick introduction to SageMaker HyperPod via an architecture diagram. So this is the architecture diagram for a HyperPod cluster orchestrated by EKX, which is Elastic Kubernetes Service. In terms of networking, there are three separate accounts at play. The first one, titled Customer Account, is your own account. So this is where the peripherals of HyperPod are provisioned. So your S3 bucket, your VPCs, your subnets, security groups, uh, your file systems, and any IAM roles that you create. As part of a CloudFormation stack, we also provision the EKS control plane. Now being fully managed, this control plane resides in the EKS account. And lastly, the meat of your cluster, which is your ultra cluster nodes, all of these reside in the SageMaker account. This is because the resilience of these nodes is fully managed. You still have direct SSH access to these nodes, uh, and all three of these accounts actually communicate seamlessly via uh, cross-account ENIs. So let's talk a little bit about how we got to launching training plans. Before SageMaker Flexible Training Plans, with SageMaker HyperPod, you had two primary compute capacity options at your disposal. The first one is on-demand capacity, which provides pay-as-you-go flexibility, ideal for dynamic workload requirements. However, this on-demand model ties workload execution directly to available capacity. Additionally, persistent on-demand usage usually tends to incur higher costs over the long run. Alternatively, the long-term reservation model allows you to uh, reserve compute instances depending on your projected workload requirements. This is done by securing this reserved capacity upfront, and this way you gain assured availability and can take advantage of uh, lower effective pricing compared to on-demand. However, to extract maximum value from these long-term reservations, you must diligently plan and execute uh, workloads to maintain high utilization rates across the provision capacity. Since the investment has already been made, it becomes critical to optimize usage and avoid underutilized idle resources in order to realize the full cost benefits of the reserved model. Now, while the existing on-demand and reserved capacity models offer quite a few benefits, you may require additional flexibility to be able to plan and execute your training and inference workloads in alignment with specific timelines and budget constraints. A common scenario is the need to temporarily scale up compute resources in your HyperPod cluster to accelerate or complement intensive training workloads during crunch periods. Now, to address this need, at reInvent 2024, we launched something called SageMaker Flexible Training Plans. Think capacity blocks, but for your SageMaker HyperPod cluster. It enables access to short-term capacity while preserving the resilience, versatility, and robust uh, monitoring capabilities that are inherent to SageMaker HyperPod. Procuring a flexible training plan is designed to be an intuitive process. Through a user interface experience similar to capacity blocks, you can specify your desired instance types, number of instances required, the duration for which you need the capacity, and your earliest preferred start date. The system will then recommend optimal training plan offerings tailored to those requirements. You can make an upfront payment to purchase your selected plan. Now, once the payment for the plan is processed, you can immediately utilize your training plan capacity by providing the plan's Amazon resource name or the ARN in your cluster configuration. A key feature is that you don't really need to wait for your training plan instances to be ready before getting started. By simply specifying the plan ARN in your cluster configuration, you can spin up your cluster and the compute nodes will automatically join the cluster as soon as the resources become available, streamlining the entire process. Before the nodes join your cluster, you can maybe work to familiarize yourself with the orchestrator, and this could be either Slurm or EKS, or even uh, work to queue up any training or inference scripts that can run as soon as your compute resources are available. With that, let's move on to a quick demo showcasing how you can purchase a training plan and create a HyperPod EKS cluster. You can replicate all the steps from the demo I'm about to show you by following the steps in the workshops. We've made two workshops available. One is for Slurm, as you can see on your screen right now, and one is for EKS. 
Today, we're going to be following the steps in the Hyperpod EKS workshop. As I discussed during my presentation, the first step is actually creating a CloudFormation stack, which as you can see, uh, is completely created on my end. Some of the resources that I created are the S3 bucket, your EKS cluster, and then all your networking resources like your private subnets, your public subnets, your VPCs, um, your file system, and uh, your execution rule. What we've done is we've actually provided you with a script that you can uh, automate uh, all of the steps provided in the workshop. So let's go ahead and actually run that right now. So it's a simple shell script. And the, the first things that it confirms are basic details like your account, your region, etc. So we can just go ahead, hit enter through it. It checks that some of the necessary packages are installed on your local system. We're happy with this. We're going to use US East 2. Hit enter. Enter again. And then it's going to go ahead and clone a repository. This repository is already cloned on my local system, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to go ahead and clone it again. And the next step is providing the name of the CloudFormation stack that we just deployed. So I'm going to go over here, copy it, and then paste it in here. Hit enter. And what the script is, script is doing is it's querying that CloudFormation stack's outputs and trying to get a bunch of environment variables. So as you can see, it's the same environment variables you saw before, your EKS cluster, your execution role, which is just a role that your Hyperpod nodes take on, your S3 bucket, um, your VPC, your subnet, and your security group. The security groups are configured uh, so that uh, these nodes can communicate via the EFA protocol. We can ignore these for now. Uh, we'll be setting this these uh, parameters as part of the script. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, this looks like the right context. And oh, the script also added in my current user as a uh, as an access entry to the EKS cluster so that my IAM user is able to access it. I'm happy with that. We can hit yes and continue down the script. Would you like to add additional admin users to the cluster? So I'm going to go ahead, hit yes, and add my teammate to the cluster. And then once I'm happy, control D. Okay, so I was able to add her successfully. And now what the script is doing is it's installing a bunch of dependencies uh, for Hyperpod. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what those are um, before we see it being installed. So what, what's being used is something called Helm, which is a package manager for EKS or for Kubernetes uh, more broadly. What gets installed is a health monitoring agent, which is just an agent that runs at all times on your Hyperpod nodes to monitor for things like ECC errors and any other errors that you may, uh, hardware errors that you may run into while training or even inference for that matter. You also install the NVIDIA device plugin or if you're, you're running on neuron-based instances like Trainium and Infrentia, you can it, it install the neuron device plugin as well. It also installs the EFA Kubernetes device plugin so that your um, instances are able to use EFA to communicate with each other. And then we also install a bunch of other operators that you can use for training. Uh, you, you're not constricted to using these. You can also add on to the cluster as you'd like. Cool. So it looks like all of the dependencies were uh, installed. And you, as you can see, uh, there's a quick command here to confirm that. It says, the Hyperpod dependencies are installed in the default namespace uh, as of today. Cool. And now comes the real fun part of creating the cluster, which is the cluster configuration. First things first, let's name the cluster. I'm happy with the name ML cluster, so hit enter. Now we're going to configure each individual instance group. So the instance group is as quite self-explanatory as in groups of instances. Um, we're going to configure two instance groups for this, one with my training plan instance, which is uh, going to be a P5EN, and the other with um, more accessible GPUs like the uh, A100. So I'm going to use the G5 or 8x large instances. I'm going to hit enter. So let's start with the P5EN configuration. P5EN dot 48x large. Now, before we go ahead and configure this, let's go on and purchase a training plan. To be able to do that, you go onto the SageMaker AI console, and if you scroll down on the left side, you should see a section called Training Plans. So when we click into it, let's create Training Plan, select Hyperpod Cluster. For instance type, let's do ml.p5en.48xlarge. Instance count, we're going to do 1. And it looks like the earliest start date that's available is tomorrow. You can also go in and change it. So for example, if you want an instance in March, you can go ahead and choose that as well. I'm going to keep it for tomorrow. And then for duration, we're going to do one day. 
right? And like I said during my presentation, uh, the UI immediately matches you with a training plan. Looks like there's one available starting tomorrow at 3.30 UTC minus 8. And then it ends on February 13, which is the day after tomorrow. Uh, it also gives you information about the availability zone, the instance type, which is what you chose. And then, of course, the upfront pricing that you'd have to pay. So once you're happy with this, you can hit next. Name the training plan. Um, we can call it um, P5EN FTP. Hit next. Confirm that all the details are right. And hit submit. It's going to ask you one more time to confirm. You can hit go ahead and hit purchase. Okay. So immediately you can see that this is pending. Pending means it is pending payment. Uh, we can go ahead and use another one that I just created some time ago, which is demo training plan. It is the exact same thing. Uh, ML.P5EN.48XR starting on Feb 15th instead of tomorrow and uh, ending on Feb 16th. So let's copy the name of that and then head back over to the script. So number of instances, one. Are you using training plans? We can hit, hit, uh, answer yes. Enter the training plan name. I'm gonna use demo training plan. And now what the script is doing is it's trying to, um, uh, successfully did as you can see, get the details of the training plan. So this should be the exact same thing that we saw on the console. So demo training plan, total instance got one, uh, US East 2C and then ml.p5en.48xlarge. One thing you'll notice is that the available instance count is zero or not even zero, it's null. If you remember uh, from the console, the instance only becomes available on the 15th, which is three days from today. Um, but the cool thing, like I said during my presentation, is that you can still go ahead and add it to your cluster. Um, the instance won't be up yet, but what you can do is you can go ahead and schedule a training job uh, to run. And once the instance is ready, it automatically joins your cluster. So do you want to continue anyway? I'm going to say yes. And it looks like all the checks for the training plan succeeded. Would you like to add, enable instance stress test? Uh, this is highly recommended in general. So what gets run is the NVIDIA uh, DCGM level four, which is essentially it uh, fills up your GPUs and makes sure that your hardware is healthy before running. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to hit no so that we can get those instances up uh, faster. And then same for instance connectivity. Uh, this ensures that EFA is properly configured on your instances. I'm going to hit again for the sake of demo, I'm going to hit no. And would you like to add another worker group? Let's go ahead and do yes. Worker group two is fine. And I'm gonna do ml.g5.8xlarge. Number of instances, I'm gonna choose 15. Are you using training plans? This time, no, I'm gonna to stick to regular on-demand. And again, for the sake of demo, I'm gonna do no for both of these. Do you want to add another accelerator group? No. General purpose, uh, again, this is recommended in the uh, general case scenario so that you can offload non-GPU related tasks to your CPU nodes. But again, for the demo, I'm just going to do now. And what you get as an end result of the script is a cluster configuration. One thing to note is you don't have to run the script to create a cluster. You can also do all of this manually. The script is just meant to make your life slightly easier. So let's go through the cluster configuration quickly. So this is the entire uh, JSON file. To start with, you named your cluster ML cluster, and we're using EKS as the orchestrator, which is Elastic Kubernetes Service. The EKS cluster ARN is given here, which is what was provisioned as part of your initial CloudFormation stack deployment. And then we have the instance groups that we configured. The first one is our training plan instance group. So you can see ML.P5EN.48XLarge. We called it worker group one. We have one single instance, and as you can see here, there's a training plan on a parameter added in, which gives you the uh, which adds in the ARN of the training plan, which is demo training plan. And if we scroll a bit further down, we can see the second instance group, which is worker group two. We configured it to have 15 G5.8x large instances, and in this one, you'll notice that we don't have the training plan ARN because we use on demand. So this looks good to me. I'm going to hit enter, and that's it. Your cluster configuration is complete. The cluster can also go ahead and create the, uh, the script can go ahead and create the cluster for you. So I'm going to hit enter for yes. And there we go. The cluster is about to get created. So if we go over to our SageMaker AI console and head over to Hyperpod clusters, we can see now that ML cluster is newly created. 
or it's being created. So if we head on over to the instance section, you can immediately see the two worker groups that we configured, worker group one, worker group two. For now, there's only zero instances available in both of them, but eventually we're gonna see instances being added in. You can also track the lifecycle scripts, um, the execution of the lifecycle scripts via, via CloudWatch. Cool, so it looks like the cluster is in service. Um, if we head back over to the instances tab, we can see all of our worker group two instances are up and running. We keep going down. Yeah. And then uh, as expected, there's still zero instances in the training plan because like I said, the training plan doesn't start until three days after. But that was uh, that was it for the demo. We can quickly even check um, our uh, Kubernetes cluster and make sure that the nodes are up. And as you can see, all of them are in ready status. What you can do is you can go ahead and queue up a training job. And then once that P5EN joins, it will um, automatically join the cluster and you should be able to run any training on it. So this has been Aman uh, showing you a quick demo of using flexible training plans to be able to quickly create a SageMaker Hyperpod for EKS cluster. We use flexible training plans along with other resources like on-demand, uh, and you can also use this for capacity reservations or, or other long-term reservations. Um, thanks a lot for your time for watching. Uh, stay on the lookout for the next video where we cover task governance and how you can optimize your cluster even further, and we'll be doing the demo on the same exact cluster. Thank you very much.